Hello students. Uh, in this video I'm going to talk to you about nested loops. So uh, when we insert a loop inside another loop such construct is called nested loops. And Nested loops have a very, very wide application in the software engineering. In fact, nested loops are the workhorse of software industry. The difference between people who become software engineers and people who don't, one of the major differences, people who become software engineer can, uh, they master the nested loop technology. Okay. So any of you who wishes to become software engineer should master the nested loop technology. And in the next slide we show pattern of a nested loop. This is the pattern here shown in a flowchart. In outer loop I'm testing a condition P actually this should be so while actually I think I had a better version of this uh, let's see if we do actually we don't so let's just go back to this think of this not as a do while but a, just while so while condition P is correct then do T T is this box here and the T includes a inner loop which might be something like while some other condition M is true then do some other task Z okay so when outer loop condition is true it does a whole bunch of things in this blue box and blue box will contain an inner loop which will test another condition and do some other tasks Z okay and in C++ uh, uh, the pattern of nested loop schematically will look something like this over here we'll initialize outer loop or any other variable that needs to be changed inside the outer loop part only and here's the pretest of the outer loop condition then there may be some tasks in the outer loop before the inner loop begins even and once the inner loop is exited there may be more tasks and somewhere there's a auto loop update and then of course don't forget that inner loop requires its own initialization of the loop condition any other variable that will be changed here need to be initialized also because you want this yellow box to execute many times subject to this condition here so there may be variable that are being changed here that needs to be initialized here also not just the loop variable and then you do the inner loop processing and update. So whatever condition makes the outer loop run a certain number of times, inner loop will, this yellow box will run that many times and this will have its own processing and number of times it's going to execute. Okay. Uh, one important thing we want to tell you about is uh, that's a technological issue students have problems with it until they master it understand the dots and I'm showing one there may be more represent loop tasks that must be done for the outer loop uh, over here and here and there is no fixed technology to tell you how the task for outer loops are distributed we might have several here maybe one here we might have just couple of here, maybe many here. There's no fixed technology to tell you. Uh, the distribution, how many are here, how many are here, all depends on the software problem you're aiming to solve. <clears throat> and in addition, the way the design is done, we'll talk about that very shortly, that there's no point putting this yellow box code inside a outer loop unless you know that this works correctly okay there are different opinion about that 
But really what truly works is that this yellow box must work correctly. You should ascertain and confirm that it works correctly. And then you have to go out again and wrap this yellow box inside the outer loop. Okay, and add more things as you need them. Okay, so uh, we help you understand that a little bit more over here that you should really first design the inner loop, code it, and make sure there are absolutely no error in its functioning. There's absolutely no point putting a piece of inner loop code in an outer loop if it doesn't work correctly. And you'll, you'll be just wasting your time, basically. There are different opinions about that. Some people say outer loop should be designed first. I disagree with that totally. You're wrapping an inner loop inside an outer loop and if it doesn't work correctly, if you have not confirmed and debugged it that it worked correctly, there's absolutely no point in uh, having it done more than once because it's going to come out wrong. Okay? So design the inner loop first, code it, make sure there are absolutely no errors in functioning, confirm that it works correctly for many different executions. Okay? And then inner loop actually becomes the part of the loop task for the outer loop, okay? After designing inner loop, making sure that it's, there are no errors in functioning, then proceed to wrap the inner loop inside the outer one. And to do that, you may have to go up and down in code sequence and add statements to accomplish the whole nested loop correctly. Uh, design of nested loop does not move in a linear manner as if you are driving a car from point A to B. No, it doesn't. You have to go up and down in code sequence and add things to make it work correctly. There's no linear movement like if you're driving a car uh, from, let's say, Rose State to 29th Street Mall that you'll see this landmark first and this landmark. No, it doesn't work that way. You may have to go up and down in the code to accomplish that. Okay. <clears throat> Each loop will require all four components, initialization, pretest or test, loop tasks, and update. And loop task is a distribution of statements uh, for the outer loop before inner and outer. Okay. Okay, we're going to show you first a simple example of nested loop. And we'll show you how to create a nested loop that will create numbers table for children. For example, the program will print number table similar to below. The 2, 1, j is 2, 2, 2, j is 4, 2, 3, j is 6, and so on. And finally, the last 2, 10, j is 20. So first, this will be a simple loop, of course. Uh, just doing this alone will be not a nested loop. This will be a simple loop. But then we'll wrap that in an outer loop to show you how to do it for uh, desired numbers like 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, whatever. Okay. So inner loop should iterate, in this case, from 1 to 10, including numbers 1 and 10. And multiply the number 2 with values 1 to 10 each time and output the result. Okay. And therefore the pattern of inner loop would look like as we show it in the next slide. So here, I'm going to, since I'm going to print a number table for 2, I declare a variable called int number equal to 2. But then I need an initialization of the inner loop counter. So I de declare an inner loop counter, set it to 1. And recall that inner loop, if I want to print a number table for 2, then inner loop should run from 1 to 10. Because if you remember a couple of slides ago, uh, I showed the table, well, let's go back, we have time to do that. Yeah, 
So the reason we need to run in a loop from 1 to 10 is that first time is going to do 2, 1 to 2, second time is going to go 2, 2 to the 4, third time is going to do 2, 3 to the 6, and so on, and lastly it will do 2 tens are equal to 20, okay? Sorry, the way I'm doing this, I can't advance using the space bar. So I have to do this. Oh. Okay, so that's why we need to set the inner counter to one. And then we test the condition that while inner count is less than or equal to 10, we must include the 10. If you do it less than, then you should do it 11 actually, okay? and then do the loop task and update the inner loop condition. Inner loop condition, this is a count control loop, so it will simply be increasing this inner counter by one, and loop task will be simply printing that two asterisk one equal to two, and so on. So we're gonna code this in Xcode, and pretty much take some of this code and put that in Xcode. Uh, Xcode is a compiler for Mac. Since I'm making this video in Mac, I can't use Visual Studio. And I'm just going to set it up in this video. Uh, just type certain things in Xcode for you, which will give you a review of this. But really, actual program will be done in the next video. So let me pause here for a second. I'll be back. OK, so I'm in Xcode now. So here I'm going to type int uh, inner, actually let me just type the number first, int number equal to 2, and then the counter for the inner, uh, inner counter equal to 1. So now let me type the code and just show it to you so I can show in this video that this works. I'll review it again, of course. So inner loop is pretty simple. I set a number equal to 2 because I want to print the table of 2. I initialize the inner loop counter to 1. Then I test the condition while inner counter is less than or equal to 2. See out the number, the value itself, asterisk as a string, then inner counter, which will be 1 for the first time. So first time I'll be printing 2 asterisk 1 equals to number itself, which is 2, and the inner counter value multiply the 2. So first time will come 2, 1, ja equal to 2. Okay, so let's run this now and you'll see the output and of course uh, sorry about the fact that font in the output are too small but I'm hoping if you maximize the video you can see it so you can see this table in fact I'm gonna just copy and paste that and print it for you here uh, so you can see it in the larger size. So can you see that it did print the table for two because it ran this piece of code each time for all the numbers from one to ten. And this was our loop update right here. And this is our loop task. Okay. So we have perfected the inner loop for printing a number table for two. Now we're going to come back and do it, wrap this piece of code inside an outer loop. So let's do that in the part two of intro to nested loop. Thanks for listening.